In 2023, we had some new developments and new products come to the market for prostate cancer treatments. So we have PARP inhibitors, which help you have more strategic medicine. We saw updates in imaging. We saw widespread distribution of drugs like Pluvicto and even weight loss drugs come out. So today, Dr. Scholz is gonna talk about the new things that happened in 2023 and give us a recap of the year. And he's gonna give us his perspective as a medical oncologist focusing solely in prostate cancer. One of the greatest things about that perspective is he's also gonna tell us about the challenges that patients may face with all of this new technology and teach us how to contextualize it. I hope you find this video helpful. So Dr. Scholz, we're sitting here in January of 2024, and so our previous year of 2023, we had a lot of new developments in prostate cancer. And so it's quite exciting, everything from PARP inhibitors to big production plants coming up for some of these more advanced treatments and even assays that you know are letting us know what type of radiation side effects to expect in certain patients. So I thought we would kind of break them down and go over some of the highlights and then really how you feel about all of this progress that we've seen. So. How do you feel about the PARP inhibitors that have come out, Talzena, and we see Akiga, and what are your thoughts on them? Maybe you can break down what they are for the audience and how you see them playing out. When we're losing traction and we're dealing with people with advancing prostate cancers, one of the things that patients have, have dreaded over the years is having to go on any type of chemotherapy. And things that postpone that are looked at as a, uh, a real real value. PARP inhibitors in patients that have uh, certain uh, mutations, and of course that's another breakthrough that we sort of gloss over, is that people can be tested now with their blood or mouth swab and determine if you have a type of prostate cancer that will respond specifically to these PARP inhibitors. And they take people who otherwise would have to go on chemotherapy uh, and allow them to go into a remission and uh, keep their disease under control. I think it's just one example of the many things that are changing so quickly in the prostate cancer world and maybe in the world of medicine in general that encourage us greatly. And I know we're gonna cover a number of these things in our video today. It is encouraging because there are so many new developments, but when it comes to maybe delaying chemo, how do you see, you know, we have this new PSMA scan that came out and was approved in 2022. Now we have an entire year where we've seen PSMA play out. How have you seen that affect these types of situations? Well, two ways specifically. Historically, we've always had the ability to go in and, and take radiation, not always, but over the last 10 years, uh, and zap spots of cancer. And the attitude toward that was sort of like, well, it's just like a game of whack-a-mole. You get one spot and another one will show up. And that was an outgrowth of the older scans where they couldn't pick up really tiny spots at an early stage. Now with PSMA PET scans, we are finding the cancer uh, when it's at a much earlier stage. And we have a growing list of people that have had metastatic disease treated with spot radiation that appear to have been cured. This is a gigantic paradigm shift over the way we used to think of uh, metastatic disease in the past and the way metastatic disease is considered for most other cancers. If there's any metastasis for most other cancers, it's generally thought to be inevitably fatal at some point. Uh, prostate cancer, that belief has been mitigated because of the effectiveness of hormone treatments, but hormone treatments have notable side effects. Spot radiation, typically has no side effects or very little side effects. So the uh, PSMA PET scans have altered the landscape in a big way, bringing a form of spot radiation that was sort of on the sidelines in the past now to being a very practical intervention now for men with metastatic disease. The other implication of the PSMA PET scans are for men who are newly diagnosed. Historically, as a precaution, because of the concerns about possible metastasis, we would give extended hormone blockade for 18 to 24 months in people with high risk, you know, Gleason scores of eight, nine, or 10, to compensate for the possibility that there might be cancer out there. With the new PSMA PET scans, the doctors are starting to rethink that policy because when the PET scan shows no, no metastasis, we're much more confident that there really aren't metastasis. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. The logical outgrowth of that is that men that undergo curative treatment uh, for newly diagnosed high-grade disease um, can consider cutting back on the, the 18 to 24 months of hormone treatment that has been the traditional norm. 
Before I get to my next question, please push that subscribe button. When you do this, it tells YouTube that this video was helpful for you, and they will push these videos out to other people who are looking for prostate cancer answers. Also, if you would like to join our cause, you can do so at pcri.org forward slash donate. Now back to this video on 2023 updates. How would you say active surveillance has played out in 2023 since we do have these PSMA scans and you know patients are able to see very clearly if there is cancer in their body or not? It does have implications for active surveillance because in the early years of active surveillance, doctors would take men off active surveillance if their PSA started going too high. PSA was probably the best guess as to whether there was some metastatic disease uh, or a greater risk of metastatic disease. Not very precise, but we didn't have anything better. Now with PSMA PET scans, we're emboldened to continue to do active surveillance in men whose PSAs may be running a little high, but their PET scans show that there's no spread. The PSMA PET scans are changing pretty much the whole landscape in the prostate world. So in your previous example of how PSMA was used with spot radiation, you know, in in radiation in general, there has been this new assay that's come out called Prostox. And it's very interesting because they're able to determine whether or not pa certain patients will get side effects from certain types of radiation. So would that apply with spot radiation? And how does Prostox work? So the difference with spot radiation for metastatic disease and radiation treatment to the prostate gland itself is that spot radiation for metastatic disease, if done skillfully, d doesn't usually have very many repercussions. It's pretty wonderful that we can give curative treatment with maybe just some transient tiredness or maybe a one or two days of uh, low-grade nausea and you're done. It's all different, of course, when we radiate the prostate gland to try and cure people who have cancer in the prostate and the sensitive structures like the urethra and the bladder, uh, and of course, uh, nerves for erections are uh, greatly at risk. Uh, it turns out that complications with uh, urinary problems after radiation are partly uh, due to how our own immune system reacts to the radiation. And uh, this company called Miradex has developed a product that can categorize your immune system and tell you in advance of radiation whether or not you're likely to have long-term side effects from the radiation. That's the one thing we worry about when we radiate prostates is that a small percentage of people will uh, develop ongoing problems with urination that don't seem to be getting better. And uh, now with this new test, the uh, Prostox test, you can tell those individuals maybe they should go a different direction than the uh, uh, SBRT radiation or IMRT radiation. Another form of radiation sort of is Pluvicto. So we have LU-177, and even though it was approved in 2022, I wanted to bring it up in this year because at the beginning of this year, we were seeing production issues and it was causing um, a little bit of you know problems for some patients who were in those categories and couldn't get access to this drug. Now we are seeing that manufacturing plants are back up and that the company is doing quite well as far as getting the drug out there. But how would you say Pluvicto has played out in 2023 and have you had any experience with any sort of shortage issues and how did that play out? Right, so the shortage issues appear to be completely solved, thank God. The good news about this product is that it really does work. Um, a lot of the field of oncology in my long career has been, you know, false starts or maybe medicines, chemotherapy medicines that could have some benefit but would come at a high price with a lot of toxicity or maybe just give remissions in a small percentage of people that would take the medicine. So you would, uh, in the early years, we would give chemotherapy, and if one out of five patients benefited, we were, uh, we were thrilled, at least someone benefited, and uh, the side effects would be notable. So the four people that didn't respond would get a lot of side effects, and thus the terrible reputation that the, world, the, the word chemotherapy conjures up in people's minds now. But uh, Pluvicto is, um, a form of smart radiation injected in the bloodstream and it swims around and finds the cancer and radiates it wherever it may be. And patients are getting nice responses. We're talking about patients that have become resistant to second generation hormone therapy. These are serious cancers that uh, are endangering that patient's longevity. 
And uh, well more than half of the patients that embark on this treatment are, are getting nice PSA declines and remissions with relatively little must or fuss. Uh, they get uh, some dry mouth from the radiation because the salivary glands tend to p take up the treatment and they become less functional. It's uh, really a very joyful thing that we've got a, another arrow in the quiver for patients that really need help and it does work. Another drug that was approved in 2023 is a drug called ZepBound, and this is a semaglutide, and it's a combination of semaglutides. So, you know, in the media, we're seeing all this news about, you know, these weight loss drugs, Wagovi, Ozempic, and now ZepBound has come out as kind of a more powerful version. And it's it's hit Hollywood really hard because we see a lot of celebrities taking it and there's a lot of news about it. But what are the implications in prostate cancer? Because patients who are dealing with weight issues, you know, how do the treatments affect those patients? Are these semaglutides helpful? I know you're using it in your practice. Prostate cancer has a very, what we call, long natural history, and most of the men that are diagnosed with prostate cancer will never die of prostate cancer. Therefore, if we're looking at overall health and longevity, you know, get screened for heart disease, uh, it's simple to be screened to uh, make sure you don't develop a bad colon cancer. And of course, people that are overweight are putting their uh, their longevity at risk as well. And historically, we haven't had a whole lot we could do other than counsel people and talk about diet. We all know how difficult it is to lose weight, but these new medicines are truly remarkable. And they're not universally effective, but at least half of the patients that take the, uh, these new products are getting uh, dramatic results with relatively little fuss. They can be a little expensive for some people, but um, Boy, they really do work, and uh, it's a very exciting thing. It's, we know the weight problem that we have in the United States is, is widespread, and uh, it's also occurring in our prostate cancer uh, population. With all of these new exciting treatments, and we see new imaging, we see strategic medicine, we have PARP inhibitors, weight loss, how do you as a medical oncologist treating prostate cancer feel about these, you know, new pro this new progress that we have, and what are the challenges that patients may face in this new process? A couple things. One is it presents a new challenge for the medical world, because historically new treatments have come on very slowly, and it takes a while to determine how effective these medicines are and when they should be used. So doctors are being forced to be more creative in trying to judge where to position the, all these new, these new resources that we have. And uh, so one danger now we have in 2024 is that you won't get the best treatment, not because your doctor is a bad doctor, but because there's so many new developments in so many areas of medicine that they really just are unable to stay abreast of what's going on. That's a real danger, and it becomes a bigger danger every year. The other implication for our patients with low-grade prostate cancers is to minimize the risk of uh, cancer metastasis. Patients who've been in the gray area for active surveillance have often said, well, maybe just prudent uh, management is to go ahead and have treatment because if the cancer spreads, uh, then I'm going to be in, in a much more dire situation. Makes sense. But with the rapid progress of technology, we're probably going to be seeing remarkable new treatments coming out in the next five, 10 years. And even if prostate cancer spreads in this modern era, we can keep people alive for another 15, 20 years anyway. Postponing treatment becomes a more and more attractive option uh, when we look at the billions of dollars that are sent up being spent on prostate cancer research every year. We covered a lot in this video. If you would like more information about any of the topics that we talked about today, you can go ahead and click the links in the description below this video. We have specific videos for each of the things that we talked about and we filmed them throughout this year and it'll give you more in-depth education on any of those topics. So one of the things that Dr. Scholz mentioned was that one of the problems patients may face are that doctors are not going to be up to date right away on all the information and updates that happened in this past year. And not only do they have that, doctors also are usually treating other types of disease states and they have to stay up to date in those areas as well. Now this can be kind of concerning. You could say as a patient, well, I want a doctor who's up to date and I'm concerned that this may, they may not give me all my options. 
I would encourage you and say that the most important person to know your options is you. And in order to know your options, you need to know your particular type of prostate cancer. You can go to your doctor and advocate for yourself and say, this is my type of prostate cancer. This is a treatment that I've seen is approved in this area. Is this an option for me? And even if your doctor doesn't know about it right away, they can familiarize themselves, which also helps the greater prostate cancer awareness you know, platform for patients. The more the doctor knows about these types of treatments and patients are advocating for themselves, the more we may be able to, he may be able to educate patients on that particular treatment that he didn't know about before, and it can help affect that medical practice. So I would encourage you that as part of a global prostate cancer community, it's really important to talk to your doctors about new treatments, to talk to other patients about new treatments, support groups, anybody in this you know, scene of prostate cancer, because the more what we stay up to date and educated in these areas, the greater impact we're gonna have for change and more strategic medicine and better outcomes. And specifically, for you if your doctor does not know about it and maybe it isn't even an option for you it can lead to other conversations of what are options and what the next steps are all of this education not only leads to what treatments are available, what, what are the side effects, and then also what are the next steps if something else happens. So maybe the treatment that you bring up isn't an option for you now, but it may be an option for you later. Again, I would really encourage you to have these conversations with your doctor, talk about the latest updates, and advocate for yourself. You are not alone. There is a community of prostate cancer patients out there and support group leaders and PCRI who are here for you and we want to help. If you need help kind of developing questions or talking to your medical team, you know, you can contact our helpline at pcri.org forward slash helpline. These are prostate cancer patients who have had experience in these types of areas and they are up to date in the latest treatments and they can help you develop your questions and help cultivate a good conversation for your medical team between you and your doctor. Also, if you would like to join our cause, you can do so at pcri.org forward slash donate. We are gonna continue to create content just like this and we wanna keep you updated in prostate cancer Please again remember you're not alone and I hope you have a great week.